Hi, I'm Dr. Alan Mendelson from Eye Surgeons and Consultants in Hollywood, Florida, and I'm going to talk today about the menace of blue light. And you're probably wondering, what's this business about blue light? Hopefully it'll become very clear within the next few minutes. So what I'm going to cover today is the menace of blue light specifically, but quick background, if we go the entire wavelength spectrum, going from the very, very short waves, cosmic rays, gamma rays, all the way to the very long ones, the radio frequency, broadband, which are very long wavelengths, we are actually only interested in a very tiny sliver. That little tiny sliver goes from zero to 1,000 nanometers. Now specifically, from zero to approximately 400 is ultraviolet light rays. From 400 to 1,000 is the visible light spectrum. That's your violet, to blue, to green, to yellow, to orange, to red. We want that light to come through. We want the colors to come through. We want to have that clarity. Now, we've known for years and years the ultraviolet light rays, since they supply no benefit whatsoever to our quality of vision, but they are harmful, we want to block those in their entirety. Now, why are they harmful? Specifically, a few things. Number one, they cause eyelid cancers. Number two, on the white wall of the eye, they can cause growths cause, called pinguaculas. They're caused by the outdoor sun exposure. Those pinguaculas, without protection, can and will become larger. They grow over the eye, requiring major surgery. It's totally preventable. Those growths are called pterygium. Worse yet, in the back of the eye, the ultraviolet exposure causes drusen, D-R-U-S-E-N, drusen, which is a precursor to macular degeneration, and worse yet, of course, is macular degeneration. Macular degeneration is the number one cause of blindness in the United States in the population 50 and older. And lastly, they're melanomas. Now, most people are aware we can get melanomas on our arm, our face, our forehead, and our scalp, but they're unaware that there can be melanomas in the back of the eye. But there definitely can, and they can be tragic. So as far as blocking the ultraviolet light rays, actually, it's a simple solution. It is simple, but actually it's tricky. Why is it simple but tricky? The correct answer is sunglasses. So if somebody has the sunglass protection, correct sunglasses, it'll block those ultraviolet light rays. But the tricky thing is this. Over 90% of sunglasses sold in the United States have zero to negligible protection. What they need is ultraviolet 400 blocker both on the front and the back surfaces. Now for us in South Florida, it's especially important because let's take up north, Chicago, Minneapolis. The quantity of ultraviolet exposure is negligible. But as we go closer to the equator, in particular South Florida, it's a very, very high level so unfortunately, the incidence of all of the above is far greater. So now let's move on to the blue light and the issue. Right before I start, just want to mention a, a quick thing, kind of putting in a perspective. So my wife and I are blessed with three wonderful grandchildren, a fourth on the way this month. We have a one-year-old granddaughter who turned one about three weeks ago. She's about ten words in her vocabulary repertoire, and one of them is the word, uh-oh and she uses it very appropriately. The blue light is, we've found to be a major uh-oh for two different reasons. So previously, again, we thought ultraviolet light rays, that almost like for those who used to watch Star Trek, almost like an invisible force field, and then the good light, so kind of bad, good, but we've found in the uh-oh is, that is not the case. So what happens is, well, we know the ultraviolet light rays are harmful for all the reasons we talked about, the next door neighbor, the high energy visible, the blue light, is harmful as well. There is in fact no, no invisible force field. So this causes damage two different ways. Number one, for those on digital devices for many hours a day, middle school kids, high school kids, collegiates, grad school, people in the workforce, pushing hours and hours a day, either they're on their iPads, or on their desktops, or even just on their cell phones. What happens is, blue light is emitted. 
that blue light that is emitted causes something called digital eye strain. With digital eye strain, the eyes get tired, pooped out, fatigued. Sometimes they'll get red. Sometimes people will get headaches as well. Obviously, as you increase the number of hours on digital devices, that digital eye strain goes up considerably. So it is a profound effect. People in school, people in the workforce, digital eye strain. And we're going to talk about solutions in just a few moments. The second AO, which is a bigger AO, is it has now been shown that these ultraviolet, excuse me, the blue light that's next to the ultraviolet, it causes drusen. It causes the macular degeneration that we're so very concerned about. That macular degeneration, and no one is suggesting that the digital devices exclusively are going to cause macular degeneration. But along with the other risk factors, such as smoking, such as the ultraviolet exposure, now the blue light exposure, things like that together are risk factors. But again, with macular degeneration, it's the number one cause of blindness in the United States. The key is we want to always prevent it. So how do we do that? So first of all, the single, there's a few things we can do right here, right now, starting today, when you watch this video. The first thing is this. When you're actually looking at your digital device, for example, me looking at my cell phone, you want to scoot it further away. If you're looking at an iPad, scoot it further away. Now, parents, grandparents always said sit further away from the TV, but it's the same concept with the digital devices. And the question is why? Just one more quick trip back to the classroom, back when you took physics in high school. Real important, there's something called the inverse square law. Again, the inverse square law, and you can Google it. The intensity of light is 1 over distance square. Now, why is that important? Let's go back to my cell phone. I'm going to keep the numbers very simple. So let's say I'm holding it one foot from my face. What's the toxicity from blue light holding it one foot from my face? 1 over, if it's 1 foot, 1 square is 1, 1 over 1 is 1. So let's say it's 1 unit of toxicity. But instead of holding it 1 foot from my face, if I simply hold it 2 feet away, the difference is 1 over 2 square, so it's 1 over 4. It is 1 fourth the exposure. So again, instead of here being full exposure, I scoot it two feet away, it's now only one-fourth of the total exposure. Now, if you're watching videos on your iPad, or your youngsters are watching, the ideal situation is to have it propped up, but to have it about three feet away. Now, if it's three feet away, it's one over three square, which is one-ninth. It's only one-ninth of the exposure, or 11% of the exposure just by watching that video three feet away. But the problem is many people hold their iPads, their cell phones smack under their nose, or worse yet, closer yet. So step one, starting today, you want to push things further back. Second thing you can do starting today, we talked about sunglasses that have the ultraviolet blocker. Well, guess what? The better quality sunglasses also have the blocker, the blue blocker. So my sunglasses in particular do have it, so when I have these on, so of course I want to wear them outside, but the truth is, if I'm going to be sitting watching a video, if I have my sunglasses on, I do have that protection. Now obviously teachers are not going to want to have students in the classroom wearing their shades or in the workplace, employers are not going to want to have people wearing their shades. That actually is a simple solution, but when you're home, when you're relaxing on digital devices, that's a simple solution for right now. Now, for those 90% of sunglasses that don't have protection, it's the double whammy. You're not getting UV blocker, you're not getting the blue blocker. So you want to make sure your sunglasses fully protect. So number three thing, in the future, all future eyeglasses should have blue blocker embedded within the lenses embedded within the lenses. 
So there are some unsavory characters out there who will put a little film on the glasses and say, oh, this is blue blocker. That's not factually correct. What one needs is within the lens, there's something called yellow chromophore pigment. What the yellow chromophore pigment does that's embedded within the lens, it will block, I'm going to pull up, put up the sign again, it will block the harmful rays that are blue, but allow the good stuff through. So all glasses should have blue blocker or f blue filter that are made now and going into the future. The very last issue is, for anyone contemplating having cataract surgery in the near future or loved ones having it, at the time of the procedure, lens implants are put internal in the eye. So take me for example, I am 59. When I was 57, I personally developed cataracts and had cataract surgery. I have lenses internal in my eye called Restore Lenses, which allow me to look at something up close. I can see it intermediate, I can see distance, I have no glasses, no contacts, no nothing. My quality of vision is outstanding. But even better yet, my lens implants have the ultraviolet blocker, they have the blue blocker as well. So I am protected. So anyone contemplating the surgery, that is something that's usually not discussed with your ophthalmologist but needs to be. I am a very firm believer that all lens implants used at the current time should have that protection and unfortunately quite a few of the lens implants do not. So in summary, we've known for years ultraviolet light rays are harmful. Unfortunately, blue light is now added to the club. Now there are some skeptics who will say, this sounds like too much hype to me. Well, early in my career with tobacco, the researchers were saying, hey, ladies and gentlemen, we have a big problem. The tobacco products cause a lot of damage. And clearly they were proven to be correct. A decade or more ago, the researchers said ultraviolet exposure is harmful. And now everyone's come around to understand that. And now it's the very same concept with the blue light between the digital eye strain in students and in the workforce, and worse yet, the higher incidence of macular degeneration. Thank you very much for tuning in today. You can go to our website for more information, www.myeyesurgeons.com. Thank you very much for tuning in today. Bye-bye.